Hello and shalom to all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, my name is Priestess Ariel Carissa, and I'm here today on September the 15th of 2020 to share a dream, um, to declare a dream that Father gave me on August the 31st of 2020. Um, I'm delighted to share with you all. It is a blessing. In a, it's a blessing. It's an honor. And I'm humbled to be able to share it. Um, I pray that it blesses you tremendously and I just give Father Yahuwah all the glory, the praise, and the honor, the majesty um, goes to him alone. Um, I'm just thankful to be able to, I'm thankful to have received it, but I'm thankful to be able to share it with you all. And um, I pray that he be glorified in it. And um, I thank him for his beloved son and his Holy Spirit uh, for giving us the understanding of what it all means. So I just want to pray really quickly, Father Yahuwah. I ask that you allow the blood of the lamb to cover each of us in mind, body, and spirit. I pray, Father, that you be magnified and glorified in all that is spoken here. I ask that you protect us from the eyes and ears of the enemy, Father. I pray that you continue to rid us of all worldly attachments, Father. Continue to cleanse us that we might be found blameless before you, Heavenly Father. So that when that appointed time comes, Father, that we may be found worthy to escape and I ask that all things spoken here may be for the glory, Heavenly Father, of your kingdom, and that it blesses your children. And it's in Yahushua HaMashiach's holy name. Amen. So everybody, um, I just want to first start out by reading Revelation 7 and Revelation chapter 14, uh, verses 1 through 5 in both of those chapters, because um, they talk about the 144,000. In chapter 7 is speaking of the 144,000 being sealed. And then in chapter 14, it's about the the redeemed standing with the lamb on Mount Zion. And um, so, uh, excuse me, uh, verse 1 says, After these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, if we jump over to chapter 14 in Revelation, it reads, it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of great, of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth, and these were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of, of God. Now what this is talking about, the 144,000 are those who have been spiritually redeemed to the Father. Um, they have renounced the worldly attachments um, and are completely following Holy Yahushua. They've taken up their cross and are walking faithfully with Holy Yahushua to do the will of the Father. Um, They've been cleansed from spiritual adultery, which is, you know, the indoctrine of man and the traditions of man. Um, these are that's what it means by not being defiled with women. The women is the harlotry, the spiritual adultery um, of the of religion. And it says um, in their mouth was found no guile. 
They were without fault before the throne. Meaning what they speak out of their mouth is directly from the father. It is truth of the most high father. Um, as opposed to the religious indoctrine that has taken over many of father's children and caused many of his children to be asleep. Um, these are those who have been, who have come out of the matrix is, is what it means. And it's, as it relates to the song, it says, um, they sung a new, a new song before the throne and no man could learn that song, but the 144,000, um, actually right now, um, Father Yahuwah has been extending an invitation from the platform on YouTube, uh, Wakefulness Theology with Messenger Alia Aura to invite, this is Father Yahuwah's invitation to invite his children to come and join so that they can begin to partake in the process of, uh, you know, the the process of singing his name. And it involves us being clean, uh, cleansed and refined and renouncing our sins and, um, really uh detaching ourselves from this world and so i pray that if you have not um subscribed to her channel i pray that you do so i will link her channel in the pinned message below so that you can begin to uh watch her playlist and understand the divine mana that father is giving us through this podium all glory be unto father yahuwah so uh, just to get right into the dream, in the beginning of the dream, I was working with an ex-co-worker. Her name it, is Brittany Bell. Now, my earthly name is Brittany. Um, so she and I have the same first name and we actually have worked together. Um, we worked together for a little while. And remember, her last name is Bell. I'll get to that in a minute. But in this dream, we were working in this place and she seemed to be in like a management position but she was trying to hide it from me. And I'm not sure why, because in the dream, I even wonder why she was hiding it from me. But I wasn't concerned about her position or the fact that because I was working underneath her in the dream. I didn't care about whether or not her position was higher than mine. I was just happy to be working. And so what this means, um, and I actually was given like a salary figure that means 16. I mean, it was 1650 was the was the amount. But when I looked it up in Strong's, it means like to test, to to uh, prove. Um, and what I've been given understanding of in this portion of the dream, because, sorry, I, I forgot a detail. I could see her badge. That's how I knew that she had a management position. I was happy for her and I wasn't worried about it. I just want, I was just glad to be there working. Like it was almost like, <laughs> I, I don't even know how to explain it, but I di it, it didn't phase me. Um, but what this means in this part of the dream, I was given understanding that this represents the members of the body of Christ and the different positions, how there's many members in one body. Uh, we can read about that in first Corinthians. I won't read through all the scriptures here, but I will post them, um, underneath the video. First Corinthians chapter 12 for one, but Romans chapter 12 verses four and five um, this is where it speaks of each of us having our own spiritual gifts. And, you know, Father gives those gifts according to, you know, he distributes them through his grace and his sovereignty to each member and our measure of faith. And um, the different members are like, you know, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, those who have uh, the, the gifts of miracles and healings and in Romans, it describes like the function, the office of each member, um, which is the distributed anointing that each person has to carry out the gift. And so that was that for that portion of the dream. Now, remember, I said her last name was Bill. Now, I went and dug a little bit about why he showed me Brittany Bell, because father deals with me with names a lot and her name um stood for something her last name bell a bell is shaped like a trumpet on the end for one and it's used to make musical sounds it's used to give a signal or a warning or an alarm um, a bell could be used for many things and if you look at revelation 7 just after it speaks of the 144,000 being sealed 
There's the multitude in white robes. The seventh seal is open. The angel offers prayers, incense, excuse me, offers the incense of prayers. And then right after that are the trumpet judgments. The trumpet judgments begin after they are sealed. After the 144,000 are sealed by the angel. So that was one reference to the name Bell. And I'll get to the second one here in just a, in just a minute. So after me seeing uh, myself and Brittany working together, it switched scenes. But this part, that part was fuzzy. I really don't know what happened in between. But I just know that in a split second, a woman came to get me. And we went from this realm to another realm within seconds through teleportation. Okay. And there were people there wherever we, where we had, um, gone to, they were all had already been chosen to be in this place. Now that particular part of the dream comes from first Corinthians chapter, uh, 15 verse 52, where it says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, um, at the last trump, which is a trumpet. It says, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Now, this is talking about the the dead being raised spiritually and physically. But this happened, this, us being teleported from one place to another happened within a twinkling of an eye. This is talking about the transformation because if you read in verse 51, I've used this in past videos, uh, many have been given the understanding of the transformation of father's children here on earth. And it says, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. It's a mystery. There's some hidden information in this scripture. So, um, just to move on, um, when we went to this place, I was given understanding that it was the 144,000 being chosen and taken to this place. And throughout this whole portion of the dream, like I saw my family members, I saw uh, people that I was close to, like my blood relatives. But I knew that this was representing the spiritual. It was spiritually as far as representing the body of Christ. And it was also literal. Like I, I would see some of my family there and um, like the feeling I had through this portion of the dream was that like I was not afraid of anything I had I was not worried there was nothing to worry about there was nothing no worries and um it reminded me of the scripture in Revelation 21 where it talks about um you know there'll be no more death no more sorrow no crying no more pain because the former things have passed away there was none of that in this place and it felt completely safe so, um, I saw children there cause I saw babies. Um, I saw my mom there. Um, it was just a lot of people that I seen in this place. And, th uh, there was some people who had already been there, already started their training. Um, and the lady who had come to get us, um, she looked familiar, but I, I didn't really, I couldn't make out who she was, but I understood her to be an angel. And usually when I see a woman in my dreams, she represents the Ruach HaKodesh, um, the Holy Spirit. She represents mother. But this time I was given understanding that it was an angel. But she explained to us um, where we were and that only 71 of the 144,000 had been taken to this place. Like they had been chosen to come here. Um and I'm not sure if this meant like a literal 71 or 71,000, but she said 71 of the 144,000 had been chosen. So I looked up the number 71 in Strong's and it means to lead. I lead. I bring, carry. I lead away. Um, I guide. I spend a day with. I go. Brought, going. I took away. So you can, you can read that if you look it up in Strong's. Okay, so after she, after the angel had explained to us um, how many had been chosen to come here, about the number 71, then she began to, to um, explain the agenda. 
She showed us the area where we be training and strengthening. And um, not everybody that was there had the same level of strength. Um, everybody was at their own level. And they were training, uh, there were training stations for everyone's, um, to fit everybody's ability and their level of endurance. Um, some were timid, but they had good hearts. And I was led to the scripture on this part about Jerem, um, in Jeremiah 17, verse 10, where it says, I, the Lord, search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Meaning that even though the, um, I'll, t I'll tell you what this group of people represents in just a second, but um, just try to keep it in order as I as I was shown it. Um, the lady, there was one lady in particular who didn't feel very strong. Um, I remember seeing she had brown hair, um, and the angel showed us um, those who were already there training. They had on boxing gloves and workout clothes, and they were boxing against these tires that looked like monster truck tires, and they had on their training gear, and everything that they were punching, it was solid. It was tough. Um, they were going through some pretty in, intense uh, and strenuous training. And what all of this part represents is where we each are in our walks and according to the responsibility and the calling that has been placed upon each of us, um, we each at different levels. We've been given a measure of faith and endurance to carry this out. And these training stations were going to help us, you know, perfect us in those areas. It's going to strengthen us and nourish us in those areas where, um, where we need work. And um, the boxing gloves um relates to the scripture psalm uh psalm 144 and 1 where it says blessed be the lord my strength which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight because literally we are going to be given power we're going to be given power here on the earth holy yahushua says it in scripture that we would do greater works than he because he goes unto the Father. We will be transformed and given power here on this earth. It's going to be through some event th that takes place here. But we will be given power to become the body of Christ on this earth. And um, the boxing gloves and the workout clothes. That training is representing how to engage in the spiritual battle. Physically and spiritually. Um, the battles against the enemy. Um, you know, because they're casting out demons and healing the sick, raising the dead, etc. It represents, like I said, um, the powers that we'll receive from our father in heaven and the, le the, each person's ability represent the level of strength spiritually, uh, the different spiritual levels in the body of Christ and the different divisions, uh, that we've been placed in. And some were timid and had a good heart. I've already talked about that. Jeremiah 17 and 10, Father looks at the heart. So um, what I've been given understanding of is that group of people, if there's anybody that identifies with not feeling like you're strong enough to be doing, um, if you know you've been, you know, if you understand that you're being called, you just don't think that you have what it takes to do what you've been called to do. Um, this is the group of people that are seeking to understand how to operate in their gifts. They're looking for direction from the Father to carry out their tasks, but they don't know how to um, go forward in doing so. And so in this particular part of the dream, um, when the the lady who seemed a little timid, she, she didn't feel strong enough. And the angel told her, she said, don't worry. She said, just try out the tub. And when she said that, we all looked like um, to the right of us and out there in the yard in this big green grassy area where all where the training stations were, there was a big tub. It was like a blow up tub and it was flexible. Like you would see um, a blow up swimming pool or bounce house in the backyard. It was a big tub like that. But the fact that it was flexible and it was soft, it fit this woman's makeup, um, her heart. She was very soft and she was delicate. Um, but that was her training station to strengthen her. And as I did a little digging on what the tub represents, it means um, like cleansing 
and being in the purification of your of your soul so that you can be blameless in your heart um and the bathtub um it represents to be washed away from negative thinking and uh to be cleansed of negative thoughts about you know about oneself so that um this person in particular in the dream to recognize um her strength and her place within this group of people because the angel was trying to tell her um that you know not to, to, trying to encourage her not to go back the lady didn't want to go back but she was telling her to just try out this training station so to go forward and and to go into this training so and, you know just like oh taste and see so that she would be encouraged to know that she could get through and that she she was strong enough and she had what she needed to be able to carry out her function so all in all so far this place was pretty awesome um and in the dream even up on waking up to record the dream in my journal and in my voice recording i couldn't believe like in the dream everyone all of us that were there we couldn't believe that we had been chosen you know to be there it was an honor it was overwhelming and even in, in real life i i pray to be found worthy um i pray to be found worthy to escape um I, I pray to be found worthy. I pray that we each be found worthy to, to go into the wilderness. But we were just so overwhelmed and we were crying. Um, I was crying. It was just a, a little bit much. And it made me like in the dream, I had to run to the restroom. <laughs> and when it's like when I went to the restroom, it turned into me being in a room with two babies. And I saw myself feeding these babies and they couldn't have been more than newborn or like in the early couple of months of their lives. And I was feeding them chicken nuggets. <laughs> I didn't understand. And I was eating with them as well. I didn't understand why. And, and it had some kind of sauce that we were dipping it in. And I got to be honest with you, it almost looked like a honey mustard sauce. But I know that, you know, honey is the, when, when we talk about honey, it's about being fed father's word and in the scriptures it represents um like the scripture that goes with this is hebrews 5 and 12 through 14 it was saying that for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe but strong meat belonging to them that are full of age even to those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so this is talking about being fed spiritually mature meat this is the nourishment that the woman receives in the wilderness to come back and do you know to to feed father's children to feed his children to feed his sheep and just after that scene i ended up like sitting at this table and i saw manila files like manila folders and it had each of our names on it. I was given understanding, but I was allowed to see one specifically, um, a cousin of mine. I was allowed to see her folder with her name on it. And the folder opened up and I was shown a time when she took her son to the emergency room. And what this is talking about is that I, uh, what this is talking about in scripture is that like our entire lives are recorded in heaven. Everything that we do is recorded under heaven. I mean, it's recorded in heaven down to the very smallest matter. I'm not sure what transpired at the emergency room that time she took her son, but um, it was recorded in these files. So we were being watched. We were being watched. Everything that we had done in our lives was recorded in these files. And the scripture is from Hebrews 14 and 13. It says, neither is there any creature that is naked and open. Excuse me. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him whom we have to do to whom we must give account. And Romans 2 and 6 says that he will render to every man according to his deeds. Okay, and so in the next scene, um, I was walking down this hallway and I was trying to just go through the house to, you know, just to, to navigate, to see what else was there. And I saw another family member of mine 
and she was sh- like I heard people in the room that she was in there were people singing um I mean they were just happy they were just joyful and she was trying to show me you know what was in each room and when I went into this door to the right I ended up walking outside in this huge backyard and there was uh I saw more family members. They were barbecuing. They were laughing. And, and it was just, it was a place. It was just, there was no worries there. And every time I saw a scene outside, the green was grass. And it was big open space. And you know, in Psalm 23, it talks about, you know, it says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. You know, and this is talking about, it is talking about the abundance and the provision that Father, um, has made for you know those who will come and be nourished it talks about it's also representing you know him providing for us what we need as well um that we shall not want anything um and as i was looking around and i saw my family members um i was so happy because you know in waking life as father has I can only speak personally, but I I know that many can relate that as you speak forth um, things that Father gives you, and it may not be comfortable to your family, you're not sure who, if the seed is falling on good ground, you're not sure if the seed is actually being planted, you're just being obedient and you care for your family, you want your family to hear and listen so that they can come out of any attachments that you know, or any bondage or anything that, um, anything that they may be attached to, you know, that's keeping them from father. So you don't know, but in in real life, you know, um, as I've been obedient to father, um, I wasn't sure if things were falling on good ground, but in the dream, I saw people there, you know, that I just, I was surprised, you know, honestly, I not to judge or anything. I just, it, I was surprised. I was very surprised. It was unexpected, you know, the people that I saw there. So it just goes to show, like, you, you can't make that call. Only Father knows who will make it in. Um, it's symbolic, and it was literal, you know. So, and it was just a big celebration taking place there, and it made me happy because I saw family, but I also know that this was spiritual, the body of Christ as well. Some people will know, and some people, you know, you think some people may not be listening to you, you know, in your obedience to father, but those seeds are being planted and he's watering them and he has the final say as to who, who comes and who doesn't. So, um, it was that, that was the end of the dream, but, um, I pray that this really blesses you. And as I said, if there's something you don't understand, please take it to father and ask for understanding. Um, it is for the glory of the most high father. And I speak this and I pray, Father Yahuwah, once again, that you just cover us in the blood of the Lamb, Father. Rid us of everything that has us attached to this world. Help us to take up our cross and follow you with our, all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our spirit. Everything that is within us, Father, let us run after you, Heavenly Father, like the deer panted for the water. And it is to your holy, holy name, Father, that I pray that you receive the glory, the honor, the praise. Amen and amen. Be blessed, brothers and sisters.